as you can see today, I'm joined by a very special guest. This is my homeboy, Salem. The channel's mascot, you dig? But today I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind a little bit lately. Um, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for disappearing as long as I did because I hate doing that. Uh, I was gone for like five or six days, but there has just been nothing to talk about. Training camp starts in a while. Uh, Preseason starts in not too long. There's stuff to look forward to, but there currently is nothing to talk about. It sucks. There's no content going around about football. No news going on about the New Orleans Saints that's video-making worthy. There's some little things here and there, but nothing I want to sit down and talk to you guys about one-on-one um, -on -one for a long time. Like If I want to talk about some of that stuff that's been happening, I could talk to you guys about it on stream. That way it's more you know um, to the point and not stretched out and confusing. So... I just there's nothing there's nothing that's been video making worthy. Um, I've been thinking about some topics up in my head. It's kind of difficult to get around, but um, I've thought about a few things that I could do to stretch until preseason. So, with all that being said, this is one of the videos that have been on my mind for a while. I'm gonna be doing one of these with the defensive side of the ball also, so you guys can get the gist of where I'm going. I'm going to answer if the New Orleans Saints are going to have a top five, top three, whatever offense next season. I believe that the New Orleans Saints will have a top three offense next season, but I'm going to explain to you guys why here. Now, this isn't going to be one of my typical videos where I sit here and give you a list and no, I'm just going to be talking free flowing off the top of my mind like I would on live stream, but instead this is a video. So I didn't want to go there and, and do the whole list thing. I don't really enjoy doing that as much as people, you know, as much as people usually do, I just, I'm not that kind of person, but I have, I have some ideas worked up in my head, so with all of that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the video. If you look at the New Orleans Saints stats for last year, you can see that they had 31 and a half points per game, which is third in the entire NFL. They had 379.2 total yards per game, which is eighth in the NFL, 252.6 passing yards per game, which is 12th in the NFL, and 126.6 rushing yards per game which was sixth in the nfl now the only thing i could say will you know may go down a little bit is those rushing yards those rushing yards um a lot of them were attributed to mark ingram of course he was suspended for the first four games and we did get to see a glimpse of alvin kamara breaking out into his full potential those first four games do you guys remember that game versus the new york giants he completely took over the rushing yards may go down a little bit depending on how we split Mata Latavius Murray and Alvin Kamara stats. We won't know until uh, we we actually see it. But I'm just saying the possibility of anything going down is extremely low. But if something were to go down, it would be the rushing yards. Now I read off before that the New Orleans Saints scored 31.5 points per game last year. I don't understand how, but we did. That's crazy. 31.5 points per game is a crazy number for any offensive team to have. Do I think we can repeat success? I don't think we will score quite 31.5 points per game because defenses in the league are getting better. The league is starting to cater to more, more towards defense as far as um, NFL teams actually go. Uh, the defensive side of the ball has become apparently more important to some teams in the past couple of years. So I do believe that we will have a high-flying offense, a high-scoring offense, but I do also believe that some teams will be able to capitalize on the defensive side of the ball. I think we will be more in the 27, 28 points per game type of deal uh, instead of 31.5. And the reason I believe that is what I just stated. I think that defenses are starting to get stronger league wide. But that also brings into question what the Saints new weapons are going to do. Um, we have signed Jared Cook, Latavius Murray. Jared Cook is a big one. I have said this time and time and time and time again Jared Cook is the most important signing the New Orleans Saints has made in years it's it's ridiculous how important he is if you watch last season you could tell that Michael Thomas was struggling towards the back half which led to Drew Brees' numbers having a significant drop with that being said adding Jared Cook is going to take so much pressure off of Michael Thomas, it's ridiculous. Michael Thomas is going to get stop getting double and triple covered because we have another big threat. 
apart with that, players like Traquan Smith are going to start developing into better wide receivers that, that can help more. Ted Ginn Jr. is still there. He's not going to be injured like he was almost all of last season. We have a lot of players coming back from injury that nobody realized were injured. Cameron Meredith, who had an 800-yard, eight-touchdown season in Chicago two years ago, is coming back off of injury. Drew Brees can do something with Cameron Meredith. Cameron Meredith took a pay cut to stay on the team. He clearly wants to be on the team. I think that the receivers step up big this year in ways that people can't even imagine. The receivers step up hugely. We get a solid number two in Traquan Smith. Traquan Smith breaks out, take that number two spot. Cameron Meredith, rotational player. I think this New Orleans Saints offense is, is has so many weapons that people don't even realize we have. We have weapons that when they score touchdowns, people are going to say, who is that? But we know their true potential. We know their true talent. I think if the wide receivers step up this year, which in my opinion, they do, the New Orleans Saints will score a disgusting amount of points per game. We will no doubt have a top three offense in the league. Along with that, I believe that Drew Brees is not regressing as much as people think he is. A lot of people tend to look at the numbers, but not the film. As I previously stated, Michael Thomas was getting locked up, double, triple, quadruple covered last season, and the undrafted free agent rookie wide receivers that we had had trouble getting open. Drew Brees had really nobody to throw the ball to. He had to force it into tight spots. He had to try to get the ball out to wide receivers that had no idea what they were doing. Keith Kirkwood had stepped up a little bit. Austin Carr didn't do much. Wide receivers were dropping passes like it was nothing. They had butterfingers. Nobody could catch the ball. When they did get open, they dropped it. The wide receivers played horribly. Nobody watches the film and realizes that the wide receiver play was terrible towards the back half of the season. Am I blaming this all on Michael Thomas? No, but him getting double and triple covered means a ton. There's nothing he can do about it. Nothing. The wide receiver that gets triple covered, double covered with safety help all the time, there is nothing he can do about it. You can beat man-on-man -man coverage all the time, but once there's more than one person, it gets a little hard because no matter how good you are, two people is two people. <laughs> like they, Sometimes you just won't be able to get around it. I think that Drew Brees is not regressing as much as people think he does. Is his arm getting a little weaker? Quite possibly. Uh, I think he will you know, train it back into form, but people were saying his arm is getting weaker. Uh, people were saying his accuracy is going down, which is ridiculous. He had his highest completion percentage career year last year took back the record from Sam Bradford after he broke it when Drew Brees previously earned it. He was extremely dead-eye accurate. Um, receivers were just dropping the ball, and he had to force it into double-covered zones. There was just so much going wrong here that is going to change next season. Drew Brees is going to be back on track. He has Michael Thomas. Traquan Smith is going to develop and step up. Ted Ginn Jr., the speedy wide receiver veteran threat. Jared Cook is going to open up so many possibilities for this offense. It's ridiculous. I, I don't even I can't even begin to to explain to you how important the addition of Jared Cook is. We have not had a solid tight end in years. We haven't had a really, really, really good tight end since Jimmy Graham. Benjamin Watson has always been serviceable, but after that fake retirement and joining the New England Patriots, I, I can't I, I can't mess with him the same. Um, the New Orleans Saints are stacked at every single position. We are loaded and ready to fire. We did not rebuild. We reloaded. The New Orleans Saints are deadly on the offensive side of the ball, and I haven't even begun to talk about a couple of other key things that I'm going to bring up here in a second. So stay tuned and, and look, look at my snake. Yeah, Salem's just chilling, man. Okay, so I've covered Drew Brees' regression. I've covered the wide receivers. I want to give credit where credit is due to the offensive line. Our offensive line has been disgustingly stout these past couple of years. It has been one of the best in the league consistently, and I don't think that's going to change. Max Unger retired, but Eric McCoy is going to be an amazing, serviceable, filling hole center. He is so good. He allowed like one sack throughout his entire collegiate career. That man is insane. Can't forget about Ryan Ramschek, Teron Armstead. We have some elite players on this offensive line that nobody gives any type of credit to. Do I get mad that Teron Armstead gets injured every 15 seconds? Of course. It bothers me. But I think if he gets his health in check, 
We all know what he is when he's healthy. He's one of the best tackles in the league when he's healthy. He just needs to stay that way. Our left tackle and right tackle are disgustingly good. Our center solid. Our guards aren't half bad either. I think that the New Orleans Saints offensive line is up for another extremely good year. You know a team cannot be good without a good offensive line. We've seen it happen plenty and plenty times. Do you have you guys seen the the the, the Houston Texans? Their whole playoff run got stopped because of it. We have a stout offensive line, good wide receivers, solid play by Drew Brees. Our team is really Our team is stacked. So, running backs Yes, yes, running backs. We have the best dual threat running back in the entire National Football League, Alvin Kamara. I I can't even explain to you how excited I am to see him take on this challenge of being the number one back. It's it's insane. Mark Ingram was suspended for four games last year. We seen Alvin Kamara in his prime. We seen Alvin Kamara take over. I'm ridiculously excited. Latavius Murray is a serviceable filler for Mark Ingram, so so Alvin Kamara doesn't get re- disgustingly game planned for, and he doesn't get he doesn't get just burnt out. Um, Alvin Kamara. I don't even need to talk about it anymore. Alvin Kamara is going to help us so much on the offensive side of the ball. One of Drew Brees' favorite targets. One of the best running backs in the entire NFL. I'm excited. I, I really am. This offense is something special. I think it's going to be top three in the league. I think we're going to be leading in almost every category. I think Drew Brees goes out there. He breaks the touchdown record. I think he leads the league in passing touchdowns. Yes, I think he leads the league in passing touchdowns. I think this this team, it's, it's something special. Like, I've said that a million times. It seriously is. It is. I don't want to ramble any more than I already am. I could bring up Taysom Hill. That's just unfair, though. I can't really do that because we all know how good Taysom Hill is. We have the element of surprise. We have the element of having good players. Fantastic coaches. Don't let me forget, fantastic coaches. Sean Payton is one of the best offensive-minded coaches of all time. Not in the NFL. Of all time. So, be prepared. Be prepared to watch the New Orleans Saints be one of the best offensive teams in in the league once again. For like the 85th year in a row. The New Orleans Saints are coming for the offensive trophies. Let's get it. Super Bowl run activated. Expect another video like this coming out soon about the defense. But I'll probably make that one more organized. I'm sorry for this not being as organized as it could have been. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios from me and the boy Salem. We'll see you all in the next one. Peace.